And St. Louis is my hometown. Ferguson is the result of someone choosing to act in a criminal manner. You had a young man named Mike Brown who chose to strong arm rob on camera a store. Then, according to numerous forensic reports, Megan, he went after a cop's gun. He had gun residue on his hands. Mm -hmm. When you try to go after a cop with his own gun after strong arm robbing a store, you could be met with lethal that force. Cop that cop was exonerated. That, that cop was exonerated. Yes. And, and that specific that officer should not be included in, in the well, stats. Right. Although Ferguson, Megan. Ferguson itself had issues with cops. Hold yeah. on. Commissioner because I want to get Commissioner Carrick in. You know, Commissioner, uh, uh, so, so often when we see an event like this, we see many folks rush to condemn police at large. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what, Megan, I think you have to keep it in context. I know there's a lot of people that want a broad brush. The reality is cops make 20 million arrests a year, 20 million about throughout the United States. Um, there's a lot of deadly physical force. There's a lot of things that happen in those arrests, physical confrontations. Um, we take five, ten of these events a year, and then we want to classify the entire police nation, police, police uh, service as, you know, racist and, and I just want to jump in. just want to jump in as we're seeing a, a, an extraordinary moment. Look what's happening here. Well, you get listen. You're going to have guys like this. You know, they want to instigate. They want. They want to create a. What is he instigating, Bernie? I'm sorry, I've well, got then, interrupted. Look, Richard, look, look at him. What this is, is he a cop out there listen. accused of doing nothing wrong, and they, trying this, to keep this the guy peace. Is having a silent protest with his police officer. This he gets is his right first in his face and right. stares him down. This cop hasn't What's, done anything wrong. That is the first. That is his First Amendment right, Megan. No. And to you, out of all people, Megan, believe in protecting. This is his First Amendment right. I don't understand. You think that's fine. You have no problem with this. This is his first amendment right. The it's biggest not a problem question here of is what his constitutional the, rights are. It's a question of what's appropriate. And the, I see nothing wrong with this. I think what is inappropriate is this prosecutor took 13 months to prosecute this individual when this police officer had 18 different complaints against him from citizens of Chicago. That's Correct. what happened. And no one here, city, as far Richard. as I can tell, is defending that officer. The question is what whether it speaks to this a greater is... narrative, as some allege, and, and this moment here. Let me bring in Mark and Arthur. Mark, I want to ask you uh, whether this prosecutor, because now the, many of these protesters want her kicked off, saying 13 months is too long. Well, it's one or the other. Either she needed to wait that long because there are facts and circumstances that we're unaware of, and I find it hard to believe based upon that video, or she really did drag her feet. The question is why? I find it disturbing, Megan. Arthur, your thoughts? Well, I mean, the bottom line is the fact that he was on PCP is irrelevant. Unless the police officer knew he was on PCP, then it would be relevant. But there's there no evidence that he knew that he was on PCP, number one. Number two, he, he wasn't, I don't think there was a call that he was a threat. I think it was a call that he was slashing tires and, and stealing from a, from a car. So there's no excuse from that. And Megan, here's the bottom line. If that was a civilian that executed a police officer on video the way we saw it, and it was 13 months before an indictment came down, that prosecutor That's would right. be forced to resign. Commissioner Carrick, I want to go back to you on what we're seeing here on screen. Listen, you're seeing silent protests, uh, you know, and, and I, I agree with Gary McCarthy said what he said earlier, the superintendent there, you know, they have a right to protest, they have a right to peacefully protest, as long as it doesn't get out of hand. Um, you know, then that's fine. They don't have a right to commit criminal How conduct. How does the cop do his job? I mean, what is this like for a police officer? I well, mean, listen, you know, uh, you're going to have this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, people want to, they want to make a, they want to make a name for themselves. They want to look good on Megan. camera. They want to, you know, whatever. Well, stop it. Richard, <laughs> I understand. Richard, I understand the outrage. I get that. Everybody understands as we see that tape. I don't know uh, what we just uh, saw. Uh, your Megan. thoughts. I mean, here's the thing, Megan. This outrage, this is not the first time that the African-American community is dealing with this. This is countless times, over and over again. These young people are angry because their lives are literally in question on the streets of Chicago. But the, right, but Richard, in Chicago, the, the major problem is African-Americans killing other African-Americans. The, the point is that their lives are in question. This police officer put 16 bullets into this young man for absolutely no reason. Okay. Absolutely no reason. That, that is certainly how the tape looks. But, but the question is wh whether or why we don't see these kinds of protests when we see the, the crime statistics that we see in, the, in, the, in inner city Chicago with black on black crime, Richard. 
Listen, I, I think that we're mixing apples and oranges here. We could talk about black on black crime and how we solve black on black crime, but what, what, what's, at, what's in question today is the people that put their hands on the Bible and swear to protect and serve the community are harming the community, and that is a problem. And it's not a Republican problem. It's not a Democratic problem. It's not a black problem. Yeah, yeah. It's not a white mm. problem. It's an American mm. problem. I, I, I would disagree slightly with the party affiliation because Hold let's on look one second, at who Dave, is that's that's what what I want to go back to Mike. It doesn't belong to any party. Let's see what's happening on the ground with Mike Tobin. Mike? Anyway.